This video is about the pros and cons of being an ICU nurse. Hey guys, Kati Botena, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Maddie. Um, I am a nurse in the ICU and um, moving on to PACU. I love creating content for nursing students, nurses, and other healthcare workers. Um, just to give like um, tips, uh, life advice when working in healthcare. Um, I love doing daily vlogs about my work life and things that I use um, around the house and uh, when I go to work as well. If you're new here, uh, welcome. Um, feel free to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoy what you're watching. I don't want to keep this introduction long, but I wanted to uh, briefly mention that this video is about the pros and cons of being an ICU nurse. So I put a poll on my Instagram recently on what type of video you guys would like to see next and included a couple options and this was the number one option chosen. Some of you that are watching uh, are typically new graduate nurses or nursing students and you're trying to get a feel for what um, different jobs in the nursing world are going to feel like. So I wanted to start out with a little brief overview of the ICU in general. So um, if you haven't heard the ICU or you don't know very much about it, ICU stands for Intensive Care Unit. So this is where the sickest patients in the hospital go. We talk a lot about the medical surgical floor, which is your standard hospital floor. I'm not sure how else to describe it other than if somebody has a UTI that they had to be admitted for or a minor procedure like an appendectomy, a lot of times their overnight stay or their one to two day stay will be on the medical surgical floor where one nurse will have several patients, um, usually between five and eight the standard these days. And you kind of get your own private room. Maybe you'll share it with a different patient, but you kind of get your own room. Somebody checks your vitals every four hours and that's kind of your standard hospital care. However, the intensive care unit is specialized in very sick patients. So if somebody surgery didn't go well um, for patients who have experienced traumas, um, people who have sepsis, so a bacterial infection that has spread to the rest of the body and caused shock, like a state of shock to happen, people who are unconscious. These are the type of patients that you think of who are intubated, so they have a tube down their throat. Um, they're on life support which in the healthcare field, life support can mean a variety of things, but usually it means they're on some sort of medical device that has to be closely monitored, whether it's the ventilator, um, an impella, a balloon pump, uh, continuous renal replacement therapy, so dialysis. Um, it might be drains and tubes and lines. Um, and basically, even though you can have a monitor or telemetry on a medical surgical floor, the telemetry tends to be more intense and constantly observed on an intensive care unit. And these types of nurses, like myself, will only take up to two patients max, sometimes three, depending on where you are, but usually it's only two patients max, and one if they're very, very, like, severely ill. So that is where I specialize in, and the intensive care unit, there's multiple types. Um, there might be a neurotrauma, ICU, a trauma ICU, cardiac ICU, medical ICU, so just a hodgepodge of things, a SICU, so surgical ICU. There might be different names for the ICU. Usually the ICU isn't just one specific um, unit. Usually it's broken up into different uh, intensive care units with their own specialties. All of the pros and cons that I'm gonna talk about will be able to be linked to all ICUs in general. So let's start with the pros. The first pro is going to be your patient ratio. So the pro of that is that you usually only have one to two patients and you get to focus on them. Whereas in a medical surgical unit, looks like I talked about, you'll have anywhere from five to eight patients. So when you have one to two, even though they're really sick, it's a little bit easier to bounce the care and keep up with those patients. You get very accustomed to their medical history, their background, and who's got what problem when you only have one to two patients. Whereas when you have eight, 
you usually don't have a lot of time to know the whole background and story on every patient. The second pro of working in the ICU is that you get to develop critical thinking skills. So these are basically problem solving skills that you get. We have a little bit more autonomy in the ICU as opposed to medical surgical unit just because autonomy comes with the ability to do more skills and interventions. So drawing labs, IVs, NG tubes, those are all things that nurses can do on the med surge floor and the ICU. But in the ICU, we learn how to monitor the um, like life support machines, um, like the impella, the balloon pump, the dialysis, um, arterial line. You can oftentimes do IVs using an ultrasound. Um, so using like a special machine to get a really hard to stick IV and things like that. Um, we have the ability to do advanced life support protocols. So on the, usually on the medical surgical floor, they have to wait for a rapid response or code team to show up. And although they may be able to bag the patient and do compressions like basic life support, a lot of times they can't um, intervene with advanced life support, giving epinephrine, norepinephrine, things like that. We can also do rapid intubations as well. Usually you do have to have a provider's order to do that. But if things are going south really quickly, we can get on the phone with anesthesia, but we as the nurses are able to um, like give them medications, sedatives, and paralytics um, during that procedure. So you just have more around you. You don't have to wait as long. Usually providers and anesthesiologists are a little more close by and you get to see your patients more closely. So you have a better idea with those critical thinking skills when to intervene before it gets worse, as opposed to maybe somebody's getting worse on the medical surgical floor, but it's gonna be a few hours before you see that patient again. Whereas in the ICU, we can see them. We're like always outside their bed um, or we can see their monitor. So we develop critical thinking skills in order to intervene early. That way when we do call a doctor and say, hey, this is what's going on, we already kind of have in mind what the doctor's gonna order, what we're gonna need, and we have access to that. The third pro, which I basically already just touched on unintentionally, was the fact that we get to work with cool machines such as ECMO, um, Impella, Balloon Pump, things like that. We get to see more lines and monitors and um, learn how to adjust them within our um, limits, within our licensure limits based off of the protocols of the hospital but we get to constantly monitor that and I enjoy it because it teaches me more about anatomy. I have to know how the machine works and what it's doing for the patient, which is, I have to take like refresher courses on that yearly. And um, honestly, being able to take those refresher courses keeps anatomy and physiology um, and pathophysiology more solidified in my brain. So again, I would consider that a pro. Once again, the fourth pro, which I just touched on, um, talking about critical thinking skills, is that if your patient starts to crump or get bad uh, quickly, like their health starts to deteriorate fast, you can intervene a little bit more quickly in the ICU than you would be able to med surge and jump in if they go into a cardiac arrest. Another pro, um, because I lost count like I normally do in these videos, is that um, being able to work in the ICU sets you up and gives you training for higher degrees. So a lot of times um, nurses in the ICU will probably hear them say like, I'm here because I want to get a background in the ICU and learning my drips, my titratable drips, sedation, paralytics, because I want to be a CRNA, so a certified um, like nurse anesthetist, so somebody who can do anesthesia. And a lot of times anesthesia schools won't take you um, unless you have had experience in the ICU because that's where you get to see your titratable drips like epinephrine, norepinephrine, things that you have to know how to manage. Another pro, um, which some may find it a pro, some may find it a con, I, I find it a pro is that there's usually fewer visitors in the ICU. I, not to say that I don't like visitors and interacting with patient family members, but it is a lot easier to pay attention to my job and make sure that I'm not making any errors or discrepancies when there are fewer people asking questions. And the last pro that I decided to include was the salary. So obviously it's more intense care. I don't know how many times I can say that and not get annoying, but because of that, a lot of times the salary is higher for an ICU nurse. 
compared to med surge clinical nurse. We um, do more advanced trainings and because of that, um, we tend to have a higher pay. So that is a pro of it. It does come with a cost and that cost is usually higher anxiety and stress levels. Um, but if that is like the type of environment you thrive in, is that critical thinking, um, then it's not that much worse to work there and get a higher pay for it. Okay, now that I've talked about the pros, let's talk about the cons because once again, ICU nursing may not be for you if some of these cons are red flags for you in your um, career that you wanna step into. So the first con would be higher stress levels, which I just kinda touched on. There have definitely been a lot of times where I go home and I wonder, is this patient gonna do okay? Um, you have to be able to know how to think fast, do math quickly. Um, you have to be able to understand pathophysiology. There is some stress that comes for sure with um, prepping and knowing how much um, medication to give and making sure things don't have interactions, titrating drips. I've had patients who have been on five to six drips before. I've had a patient who was started on a drip that I've never worked with before called Isopro, which I think I've talked before. And I had to know where my resources were. I had to look it up quickly. And I basically had to learn about it while I was starting it because even though my charge nurse was there and helpful, um, my charge nurse had never even started it before because it, we just don't use it that much. Sedating patients can be stressful, coding a patient, so doing compressions, knowing your algorithms can be stressful. If you run rapid responses, which a lot of times the charge ICU nurse and a second ICU nurse will go and run rapid and codes. You have to know all those protocols. You have to be able to make calls before the doctor responds and say like, this patient needs to go to CT, this patient needs an x-ray, this patient needs these types of labs, this patient needs to be intubated and start working on those um, ahead of time. So definitely, I love that kind of stuff, but it could be a con if it's high stress and anxiety for you. Another con, which I'll only touch on briefly because I, it's hard to talk about this topic and I feel like we don't talk about it enough about as nurses. Um, so maybe I'll touch on it again in the future, but sometimes you can have very like combative patients. Um, anyone who is detoxing, whether it be from alcohol or drugs, um, maybe they're suicidal, maybe they are having some mental health disorders. Um, but it's causing further aggression in that patient to the point where perhaps you need restraints, perhaps you need sedation, just in order to keep them calm enough not to pull out their IVs and um, reverse treatment that they very necessarily need. Um, so we get those patients in ICU because obviously it's hard to keep a close eye on a patient like that in a medical surgical floor. So that can sometimes be a con because when you have 12 hours with a patient like that who is being aggressive, who um, may be saying mean and nasty things because they're hurting and they're, you know, detoxing and they're not in their right mind. Um, you may have patients who are constantly trying to pull things out. Um, it can be tough to have to deal with that for a long time. And sometimes we get sitters, people who sit with the patient, make sure that they don't harm themselves. Um, tell a sitter, so a camera that has somebody doing the same thing, except they speak through a microphone as opposed to being right there at the patient bedside. But sometimes it can be really hard to have to help a patient like that for 12 hours. So you have to be ready and willing to do it and realize that based on what ICU you, you work in. Um, I worked in like the cardiovascular ICU, so we took heart surgeries, but I would still get a detoxing patient every now and then because we didn't have a surgery at an open bed and I was trained to do it. So um, I there were definitely times where it was very hard and then other times where it was very rewarding because the patient wanted to do better, get better, but sometimes they won't. And so anyways, I just want to include that as a call on because you have to be mentally prepared and ready for that. And no one while I was in school prepared me for that. Another con of working in the ICU will be that you will have to do more direct patient care. So a lot of times, most of the time, we don't have very many um, nursing assistants and there's fewer things that they can do because our patients are having continuous vital signs. We don't need techs to come take vital signs per se. Sometimes they'll come and take like my blood glucose and a temperature, but 
you don't have to take blood pressure and things like that or heart rate or pulse ox that is something that we don't need text for so um sometimes i've even as a nurse i've had to stock the rooms take out the trash um perform my own like temperature checks blood glucose checks because we either don't have an aid we're short on them or just having an aid doesn't quite make sense based off of the um, size of the unit, if that makes sense. We do have aids, but you tend to do a lot more patient, direct patient care as a nurse. And when I got trained to be an ICU nurse, I was trained to do everything from charting eyes and nose, so intakes and outputs, emptying Foley's, taking blood glucose. I need to know how to do it all, but that was because I would often have to do it all because there wasn't an aid, especially on the night shift. So the last two cons, I'm actually going to kind of combined together because they're linked um, but the first one is more patient death and the second one is being attached to your patients so obviously when you only have one to two patients and you're seeing them constantly and sometimes you get them more than one shift in a row that way you can have continuity of care you're very seriously ill um, and you're spending 12 hours a day with them you can develop an attachment to them even patients that I wasn't partial to like maybe we didn't get along I would still like on my next day of work come in and want to know like did they make it did they survive are they okay did they get to go home you know obviously I have to be respectful of HIPAA and not you know get too detailed and ask too many questions about a previous patient um, because I'm no longer caring for them directly but because I took care of them I, I wanted to know how they did I grew this attachment to them I wanted to make sure that they were okay as you get attached. Um, it's the ICU, people die more often because they're more critically ill. And um, because of that, you see death a lot. There were, um, during COVID, I definitely saw death like maybe once or twice a week for a while for um, at least two months. And that was really hard to watch, um, especially if it's your patient, because it's hard not to take that personally sometimes, even though it's not personal. Sometimes it's just the patient, um, you know, had too many comorbidities, the surgery had complications, um, you know, they developed complications, they developed a reaction, they weren't taking care of themselves, a multitude of things can happen. Um, but when you're in the ICU, they're more likely to pass and um, that can be hard on your mental health. So um, that can definitely be a con is seeing more patient death but um, there are resources for that. There usually are chaplains and hopefully people in the hospital who can help slip in. Um, I definitely felt like a pro that I'll slip in is that I had great teams um, that I worked with. So if somebody had a patient pass or we had to code, our team was phenomenal and we all like would let each other talk it out, talk about what we could do better made sure that we were um, encouraging our buddies who lost a patient that way um, we could just have good rapport good teamwork and get through it together and I will tell you what um, it's really hard to work on an ICU when you don't get along with your team and I have been blessed enough to be able to work in an ICU um, more than one where um, the teams were awesome but um, it is something that you will experience it's patient death and patient attachment before I finish this video, I wanted to talk to you guys really quickly about nursing.com and before you just click out of the video, if you're a nursing student or new graduate student, you do want to hear this, I promise. It's something that I wish I had heard when I was in nursing school, but basically they are a website that has study tools, not only for nursing students, but nursing um, new graduate students, people who have just gotten their nursing license, and even um, nurses who are looking to do higher degrees education and possibly get like their um, critical care RN, so the certification for critical care registered nurses. So I love using their website even now. I've signed up for their little Friday freebie, freebies. So on Fridays, they will actually send you free cheat sheets. So I wanted to share that to you guys. Here's some of the cheat sheets that I've been sent. Um, therapeutic drug levels for antibiotics, heart rhythms, um, causes, signs, symptoms, risks. This is something that I definitely used um, where I worked in the cardiovascular ICU, disease processes and vital signs. This was a handy dandy sheet. Um, and there was actually more than one. 
cardiac biomarker. So that was again, something else that I used. I needed to know my troponin levels and CK and B levels um, in order to help treat uh, patients who came in with myocardial infarctions or heart attacks. So anyways, these cheat sheets are awesome. And that's just a little sneak peek at to what they offer. And those are part of the free um, Friday freebies that they offer. The reason I love them so much is they specifically tailor their study tools and resources for students who maybe suffer from ADHD or dyslexia or have just different think, uh, thinking and learning habits and learning styles because sometimes you'll sit in a classroom in nursing school and your um, teacher or professor will read off of a slide for three hours or read straight from the book or maybe not want to meet with you outside of a classroom to answer questions and go over material and that makes it really hard to study on your own. A nursing school is a lot of times learning how to study on your own. So these resources are great. They're well organized. They're tailored to your learning style and they even have people you can reach out to for more help. So um, if you have trouble with your skills, like I used to have trouble starting IVs, um, they even have videos on it too, which once again is great. I wish I had that in nursing school because I would watch my instructor do an ng tube or tracheostomy care one time and then i was supposed to repeat it almost like a month later and do it as perfectly as they did but i would have no resource or tool to remember how they perform their skill or what order to do things in if you guys want to check them out i have a link in my description box below you can click on it and if you, if you just want to sign up for their friday freebies start there um, and see what you think. They have free trials available. And then once again, they also have NCLEX prep. You check them out, use my link in the description box below. And um, I hope you guys found this video helpful. I will see you all later. So we say in Swahili, to Tuanana, till I see you again.